You can now follow me on all my social media platforms to find out who my latest guest will be. And don't forget to click the subscribe button and the notifications button so you're notified for when my next podcast goes live. Certainly in Baghdad, we still had to go out. So the guy, a lot of guys lost their lives on that job. Um, and we used to get hit often. It was never a case of if, it was always when. Sometimes three or four times a day, guys would get hit on convoys. What was he like, Michael Jackson? <sighs> yeah, he was all right. I mean, it's such a hectic job, that. It's just... How many people did he have around him? It was five of us all together. I mean, How organised are those pirates? Because you see them driving up in their wee wooden boats next to these big tankers and yeah, they still yeah. manage to go on and take over. They're not it. massively organised, but they are good at climbing. Like little monkeys. So what you do in a lot of the bigger tankers is you wire it up with barbed wire. I remember going back to my locker and I had a, I had a voicemail and there was a guy on there, he says, hi, my name's Chuck. Um, I was wondering if you'd be available to fly out to Morocco on Monday to take part in the Green Zone film with Matt Damon. So I thought I should wind up. When we was doing a lot of the scenes, you're running around shooting and no one was shooting back. Yeah. It was exactly like it was in Iraq, mm -hmm. but just without the hassle yeah. of, you know, the, <laughs> the worry of it all. Yeah. Boom, we're on. Hey. Today's guest, we've got bodyguard Simon Newton. How are you, brother? How are you doing, mate? I'm good. Yeah, it's good to see you. And you. Looking well, man. Trying to. Yeah. Get in there. Yeah, it's a weird time, isn't it? <laughs> yeah. So, you've been in the army. Yeah. Um, Br British army, you went to <laughs> then open up your own security company. Uh, in between, I worked in the Middle East as a freelance bodyguard. Yeah, and, and you've worked security for company. some of the biggest celebrities in the world. And then that as well on top. Yeah, yeah. interesting. Yeah, it's uh, it's been a funny old journey, yeah. really. How have you been? All right, yeah, I mean, it's... Like you just said, things are changing a little bit at the moment, aren't they? But yeah. I mean, no, it's been all right. It's been good. We've been ticking over. The security company is still, you know, doing what it should be. So, mm -hmm. um, in terms of the acting side, I've lost a couple of films this year, unfortunately. Uh, I say lost, postponed. Mm -hmm. um, but there's still a lot going on there. We've done quite a lot of bit over the lockdown period. Yeah, I've obviously checked your profile. Um, you've worked with some mega stars. Is it Kendall Jenner? Uh, yeah, I did a while with Kendall. Michael Jackson. Michael Jackson's probably the biggest Some one. Some mega yeah. names. Yeah. Um, I always go back to the start of my guest first though. Yeah. <laughs> kind of where you grew up and how it all began. Yeah, so I mean, I, I was born in Eastbourne, uh, East Sussex on the south coast there. Um, pretty standard schooling, standard sort of family life. Uh, I left school, I can't remember how old you really do GCSE, 16 is it? 15, 16? Yeah, 15, 16. Um, I didn't really get any of them, to be honest. Um, I went to get a job. One of my first jobs down here was, uh, I just realised what my first job was. I was dressed as a bear. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I forgot about that. Uh -huh. um, I used to work at a kid's play fair down there mm -hmm. and I used to dress up as a bear and take the uh, birthday cake in. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And to be quite honest, mm -hmm. um, I've told not many people that. No, you're uh, until now. Mate, so until everybody's now. going to be shouting but on actually, you. Actually, it's probably the best job I've ever had. Mm -hmm. um, if a salary was slightly higher, I'd probably still be doing that job yeah. now. To be See honest. if it's job, isn't it? It was great. It yeah. was great, yeah. Um, so that was kind of my first, first job. After that, I decided you know, I needed to, uh, I probably needed to get a bit more of a, a stable career. Um, and I actually got a job in an engineering factory down there. At the time as well, when I was younger, I was an army cadet. A lot of my mates who were in the army cadets with me were joining the army. Um, I was a fat kid, so I couldn't get in, too fat. Um, so I went and got the engineering job, they all joined the army. Uh, got an apprenticeship there. It wasn't really for me, to be honest. I did, you know, I did probably maybe... Uh, well, I was 16 there probably, so 16, 17, yeah, maybe about three years there. Probably scrapped more stuff than I actually sent out the door. Yeah. Um, so <laughs> I, Quick on the I back. wasn't a natural. Yeah. Um, and then uh, I went to join the army. I actually joined, um, I couldn't get in the regular army to start with, so I ended up joining my local reserve unit. Um, and then I went across, I went straight in. Uh, I didn't do that long in the army, all, all in all, I think it's just short of five years. Yeah, but you were I in Iraq did. and yeah, stuff. Yeah, I did. Know? So I, was, I spent a long time in Canada as well. Um, probably just over a year there. And then uh, I was in Iraq as well. Um, what was 2000, that like? 2003. Iraq, um, to, to be honest with you, for me, it's probably easily the best time of my military career. Mm -hmm. But uh, just as a young lad, I remember it like being back then is probably the 
better than any lads holiday I've ever been on mm-hmm. it, it was great for me although obviously some of the things you get to see is not you know particularly suitable for anyone's brain really but um, I thoroughly enjoyed it all my life as a, as a young kid what I wanted to be was a soldier mm-hmm. so imagine being in a football team you know training 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 never getting a game and then all of a sudden you're playing for England at Wembley or whatever and that's kind of yeah. you know, how I felt with that what was your training and stuff like for being what you said you were a fat kid to when did you start losing weight getting fitter yeah um so when it's all changed a bit now, I, know, mm. I don't know so much about the military more to be honest. But what, no. uh, I finished in nearly two thousand three, so seventeen. Nearly like twenty years, years ago. ago. Yeah, yeah, yeah. What age are you now? Yeah, forty-one. Fuck's sake, bro. Yeah. So, um, <laughs> and I don't look at die. Um, <laughs> <laughs> so back then, they used to height to weight ratio to be able to get in. Um, I needed to be about. 62 foot tall to get in under my weight so I, I, I had to go away and come back I think what I did actually is I just started running um, didn't really change diet or anything like that I just started running and when I first started running I think I did two lampposts and that was probably about mm-hmm. my maximum at the time and when I added a lamppost on and that's pretty much how it went yeah. and obviously after a bit of time you start losing a little bit of weight maybe people grandparents people you don't see all the time start maybe acknowledging that you've lost a bit of weight and then uh yeah, I just carried on from there, really. Mm-hmm. Um, I think I lost it all in about six months. I went from something like around about 22 stone, which was about a 44-inch waist, down to 13 stone uh, with maybe a 33, 34 waist. That's some difference, man. Yeah. When I, when I do things, I mean, I still do that now. I'm, a, yeah. I'm still a fat person. I can put weight on quite easily, but I can get it off as now. It's only, um, what am I now? I'm weak. I'm um, week nine of dieting now, and I was a 41 inch waist over lockdown. So, you're be up to 19 and stone now or I'm something? I'm 34 again. now. Fuck's sake, man. So, you're obsessed with all or nothing kind of mentality? Yeah, yeah. If I, if I want to get it off, I just get it off. And obviously, yeah. with a lot of what I've got going on at the moment, I can't be mm-hmm. I can't be overweight. So, what was it like then when you were long? Did you serve four years, five years? Yeah, uh, yeah, just short of five altogether. Where was the first place you went? Uh, Canada. Can- what was that like? That was all right. Most of it is training, live fire training. I did range safety out there for just over a year. Um, yeah, that, that was. Mm-hmm. That, I, I learned a lot. I was only young. Uh, I learned a lot out there. Did you see any bad stuff in Iraq and stuff? Was there any? Iraq, Iraq was a funny time because when I was there, it kind of it was near the end. Um, when it switched from the end of the war into sort of like the second part of it, it actually got worse rather than better. Mm-hmm. And I think everyone underestimated it slightly. And a job I actually had at the time was looking after um, a couple of um, American, I'll just use them as officials. Um, mm-hmm. And we was in civilian clothing at the time. We went into civilian clothing to do the job. I and mean, then after probably about not even six to eight weeks, a lot of uh, the military were getting attacked often. Um, and we ended up having to go back into uniform because it started getting rougher and rougher. And around that time as well, private security companies started operating uh, out in Iraq where a big company, I think it's changed name now, it was Blackwater, which is an American company. Um, a lot of their guys were getting dragged out of vehicles and you know, set on fire, hung, uh, you know, ambushed. It was happening quite a lot and it happened, it escalated quite quickly. So then we went back into uniform. Um, and around that time, that's when I started seeing private security companies come out um, into Iraq, which is kind of how I ended up uh, in that job myself, really. Yeah. The private security, is, they say the industry's worth over $250 billion a year. Yeah. When did I mean, that really start kicking off, the I mean, private security? Has it always been there? It's, it has always been there, but not, not to the extent it is today. And certainly back in 2003, when we all kind of started doing it, 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 it went off in a big way. A lot of the contracts out there were um, normally would have been any any other previous conflict. Maybe would have been left up to the military to, uh, military to take care of. It was privatised, mm-hmm. um, so there was a lot more slots for private security contractors um, at that time. That's always been there. A lot of the guys, um, you know, have worked in Africa, Algeria, Nigeria. It always it's always been there, but on a lot smaller scale. And probably ever since two thousand and three, Middle East. It's really taken off now, but I think there's a slight decline in it now as well. Yeah. How, so when you're saying, so from plain clothes into putting your uniform on, is that a big difference where you're more protected or is it still a free yeah, for all? Yeah, I mean, it really it was just because if you're in uniform, I mean, you obviously you stand out a lot more, but at the same time we, we had, you, there's no point in being 
uh, were in civvies and carrying a machine gun. You know, so we was losing the sort of weapon capability by being dressed in civvies, if you like. Um, so we decided to go back in uniform. We could bear arms as normal and hoping that, you know, that was kind of benefit us slightly. And it, it, it did. How it did dangerous is it, Simon, to doing a private um, what, bodyguard and compared to being in the army? Oh, that's a good question, that, actually, because in the military, obviously, you're... You normally work in fairly sensible numbers. You don't, you know, in somewhere like Iraq. Equally, you've got, or normally you've got air support. Uh, air support. You've also got medical cover, uh, um, all sorts of different air assets, and maybe um, quick reaction units around local. When you're private security, you're very much normally on your own. We only carry a certain amount of weapons. We don't have tanks. We don't have air support. Um, the military did help us when we was private security at times, but we wasn't always priority. Obviously, they had their own people to take care mm. of. Um, so they did send out, you know, helicopters for medivac if needed and things like that, but it wasn't always a guaranteed. So all the guys on the team, I think um, about 12, 12 guys on the team, roughly, depending on what job we was doing. Sometimes it might be a yeah. little more. How do you know how many people it sent on a certain job? Let's say it's a certain calibre of guest, a certain calibre of person... High, in the world, high calibre, does it, right, it's only going to take one or do you count maybe two or three on a private protection? It depends on where in the world and what you, what the situation is really, obviously. Mm. I mean, if, you, if you're talking about in London, it just depends on, it depends on so many different things on who it is, where they're going, what country you might be in. Mm. You know, certainly out in Iraq, the number of vehicles, even just to, to look after one person, you know, is always like minimum three vehicles, which obviously that all needed manning as well. Um, whereas in London, you might use two vehicles, you might only use one. Has yeah, anybody just... ever tried to kill you on the private protection? Oh, in Iraq. and I mean, I did convoys for a long time in Iraq as well, so you're not actually looking after someone, you're looking after kit and equipment. Mm -hmm. um, and because we were bringing it in from Jordan, um, Kuwait, you know, surrounding borders of Iraq, if there was a lockdown inside Iraq, it's too dangerous to go out our kit still come across the border. If it come across the border without us being there, it gets stolen. So often we was always out, regardless of you know any threat or risk level, In, in certainly in Baghdad, we still had to go out. So the guy, a lot of guys lost their lives on that job. Um, and we used to get hit often. It was never a case of if, it was always when. Sometimes three or four times a day, guys would get hit on convoys. What? Yeah. And yet it still yeah. managed. Is it a buzz you get doing uh, that <laughs> to kind of keep in that job, knowing that your life's at risk every day? There yeah, must be some sort of adrenaline you, rush as well. But by, by the time I'd been on convoys, I'd already been out of the military and I'd already done um, two years as a, a bodyguard, if you like, looking after someone out in Baghdad. So I'd been around the whole environment for quite a long time. It was a step up in tempo, I'm not going to lie. Mm -hmm. um, probably lost a lot of weight just sitting in the truck. Cause, you know, but you kind of get used to uh, the feeling of shitting yourself. And yeah. it just becomes the norm, to be honest. Do you just become immune of, like, to your nerves, fear? Yeah, you don't, I didn't think much of it in the end. I mean, you're always conscious it could be you. And obviously, mm -hmm. quite often when you'd, you'd drive back to wherever it was you were staying and you'd hear at one of either your camp or one of the other camps, you know, one of the other lads has been killed again today or yesterday. Mm -hmm. or, and it, was, it, wasn't, it wasn't every day people were getting put, but for a private security contract, it, the, the, the death rate was quite high. What about Afghanistan? Afghanistan was different for me. I worked for the Foreign Commonwealth Office. I looked after um, HMRC officers who, who mm. were mentoring the Afghan drugs police out there. So um, because we was looking after life, obviously, there, and it was government life, then the, the restrictions on us were quite tough when, when it got rough. We did used to fly up and down the whole of the country, um, put our vehicles on a C-130 and go out and visit all the city, city gate checkpoints to make sure the Afghans were searching vehicles for drugs properly and things like that. So... It wasn't too bad, to be honest. Certainly, we lived in Kabul, but used to fly Afghan wide. But certainly in Kabul, we used to get a quite a large number of vehicle-born IEDs, which I didn't. I didn't. I was. I was lucky, but a couple of lads got hit by them. We was in armoured cars. They all survived. You know, a bit burnt up, but um, I didn't find Afghanistan as bad. Again, a lot of a lot of the lads have lost their lives out there. What's the armoured cars like? So mm. no bullets can get through. Stuff yeah, I mean, that. again, in the right, we had B6 armour, I think. I'm not a technical specialist yeah. in this, but I know mm -hmm. roughly uh, B6 armour, which at the time, 
um, sort of like near the top top grade of what you're yeah, going to get. But end. even even those even that um, you'd only get a certain amount of strike marks on the window before it may go through. You know, it's not. 100% bulletproof. Yeah. So what kind of tools would you have on you in Afghanistan and Iraq compared to UK? Are you allowed any guns or anything in UK? UK don't carry anything, no. Nah. He so just uses these, use, yeah. Hands? Yeah, and it is high, open hands as well. If you do that, you're in trouble. What? Yeah. Even of some of the self-defence? It depends. It's, so it's, it's kind of, you can only meet force with force. If someone's holding a gun to my face and I, I punched him and knocked him out, then that would be all right because equally, mm-hmm. if I don't do that, then he, you know, he's going to shoot me. So that would be construed as okay. Mm-hmm. If if someone just got a little bit, you know, overzealous or maybe a little slap when I broke his nose, that wouldn't be all right. What? Yeah. So um, you have to be very careful. And of course, certainly on the celebrity front with that, it's perhaps hundreds of perhaps with you all the time. So you can't get it wrong. Do they try and antagonise though for uh, that kind of stuff? Not really, and then we've been pretty good. Mm-hmm. You do get the odd boisterous one, which can be a nuisance. More so when you're moving they're on their motorbikes and stuff, they get in the way, and you know. But when they're on foot, not really. No, I never really had any problems with them. So, you can you've got the guns and tools in other places, but UK it's just hands. Yeah, UK hands only. Yeah. Have you got a license to kill in any other countries? Yeah. Uh, so any place I've carried firearms outside of the UK, I've not needed a license, and that would be purely down to the country at the time mm-hmm. saying that we don't need a license to be there. So if you broke somebody's nose in the UK, you can get done, but yeah. if you kill somebody in another country, it's fine. Yeah, I mean, we wasn't free for all in Iraq. Yeah, of course. You know I mean? but, <laughs> but it's different how it's different laws. Yeah, restrictions are different, but normally, certainly private security, you're not an attacking force, you're not You're not the military, so you only fire to defend. Mm-hmm. Um, so a lot of the time, if if uh, you know, if you did if you did fire, you'd already been fired at, you never sort of antagonised ourselves. Mm-hmm. If anything, we didn't want the trouble. Yeah, it's not paparazzi here. Yeah, That's exactly, Do you know what I mean? Yeah. Over there, you've got fucking guns and grenades. Yeah, yeah it's the ultimate price is death. Yeah. You're not going home. So, yeah. you know, we, he, he didn't want it. In fact, if anything, sometimes if you've got ambush, if you just try and drive out of it, you wouldn't even return fire. You just want to get out of it and get away. Yeah. Did you ever get chased or anything? Uh, not so much chased. Uh, IED'd, yeah. Um, roadside bomb, yeah. Um, small arms, yeah. But not, not really, not, you know, it's not... One of the biggest fears, I think, certainly in Iraq in the early days, was getting dragged from the vehicle. I know, again, a couple of guys, another private security uh, American company, in the early days, they got dragged from their vehicle and paraded through town and they got hung off a, um, a flyover and set on fire. What? So, and that actually, when I first went for the job, that was a video. They showed us that just to show you what you was getting into. And if you didn't fancy going out there, then... You know, now's the time to say. So those videos are real now. You see videos maybe on the news when they've got the, the knives at their throat and they've got people screaming in the background. That happens? Yeah, I mean, I, I, I say, yeah, I've never been there, yeah. luckily. luckily. Yeah. Um, but yeah, I mean, that, that's pretty much it. They are they are genuine videos, yeah. Obviously, you don't get to see the worst bit because they mm-hmm. cut it off normally. But yeah, I mean, that, yeah. Is, that is how it happens, yeah. There's a lot of people will get taken and luckily, you know, um, UK and US... Uh, special forces are pretty pretty good at, at picking these people up now, mm-hmm. but unfortunately, you know, sometimes some do get missed. Taken, they ever get taken for ransom or stuff, or they're just getting took to get killed? Uh, so when we was in, that was a funny thing actually. When we was in Iraq, we used to uh, drive past Fallujah. Um, I think it's Muqtada or Sad. I used to put out on the radio there, um, but it was a five thousand pound, uh, sorry, five thousand dollar reward for any Westerner that was caught and taken. Um, taken into Fallujah so we always had a price on our head anyway for if we were getting caught one of the main places they would catch you was in the main supply routes because you was in the middle of the desert in the middle of nowhere if they ambushed you and crippled you and you couldn't run anywhere because you're running out into the desert and that would be a good time they'd normally drag you across the road and take you away I'm scared yeah, of shit man for a few quid yeah <laughs> Sign me up for that. I mean, mate, I don't, I don't, don't get me wrong. I'm, all, I'm, I'm, I'm happy with a price on my head, but I thought I was worth a bit more than five grand. Is that what it was? <laughs> well, yeah, five grand, five miserable thousand, yeah, bastards, like aren't was, they? Yeah, it went. So when through all that, did you ever struggle? I know a lot of the boys in the army and stuff like that. Private protection, a struggle with PTSD. Yeah, uh, I always say no. If you ask people I work with, it might yeah. say different. But mm-hmm. no, I mean, no, I've been lucky. Yeah, I've, I've been lucky. I'm very good at. Dealing with separating that. certain things mm-hmm. yeah and it's not just it, um, anything in my life what's maybe not gone right for me um, I'm very good at separating that and you know just putting it to one side equally I do have I do have a few issues from uh, bangs I can't I can't uh, stomach loud bangs at all now 
Are you on edge? Yeah, not to the extent. I'm not, I don't walk around scared every day, but if, if, a, if a car backfires, you'll see me jump, physically jump, probably leave the floor. But equally, it takes me maybe 15 or 20 seconds to properly get over that, whereas you'll, you've probably not even thought much of it. You know? yeah. So, I mean, it, that's nothing, yeah. to be honest with you. If that's what I've got to complain about, you know, I've, I've done Compared it Compared to some boys, yeah, man, because oh. we do a lot of homeless work, man. It's scary to see so many veterans on the street. It's fucking heartbreaking, yeah. actually, yeah. that people can get used as a pawn and just put down in the street like a piece of shit and not get the help yeah. that they, they need. It's yeah, some guys. I mean, the other thing with it is people don't... You know, I did... Uh, if you include the military, I did um, five and a half, nearly six years. You could argue on operations, you know, in the Middle East, working between Afghanistan and Iraq. That's a long time to be exposed to that sort of work. And some guys have done longer. Some guys have done... In fact, if I looked into it deep enough, there might even be one or two guys who are still doing it now from when I was there, so nearly 20 years. Mm -hmm. But... Certainly with the PTSD thing, I think sometimes people don't realise that you can get PTSD in one day. Oh, of course. You know, you, yeah, don't, yeah. you don't need to go on a mm -hmm. six-month tour of the army and war fight or yeah, whatever, yeah. you know, it affects everybody differently. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, it's a big problem, but uh, no, I don't have, I don't, I get the odd, you know, when I go to sleep and stuff, I get the odd, uh, odd dream of being shot or, you know, whatever, mm -hmm. but it's not to the extent that I ever worry about going to sleep. Yeah. I don't, you know, I don't. Do you think exercise helps you? Oh, the gym for sure yeah. I mean over the years I've had to see different people to talk about different things because the company I used to work for if you got in any sort of um, sort of bad trouble they used to send you to like you know um, psychiatric but mm. I suppose it is that kind yeah, of thing yeah, yeah. Um, and I, everyone any doctor I've spoken to about anything over the years they've always said that it's the gym what really keeps me sane, sane yeah. yeah and certainly my business it's hectic you know but my security company now it's very very busy what is your security company? in what respect? The one you've got. What, the name of it? Yeah, yeah. Ascari Secure. Mm -hmm. So we're based in um, Palace Street down in Victoria, central London. And that's all private protection? Yeah, we do five-star hotels, um, high-class events, bodyguards, a lot, a lot of you know, close protection work, uh, residential security, asset protection for people in the city and surveillance. Mm -hmm. So we cover a range of services, really. Obviously, at the moment, with what's going on, the hospitality side of it with the events and the hotels are a little bit quiet, but... Mm -hmm. um, the rest of it's been fairly solid. I started in 2010. So we've been going a little while now. Um, and it's growing. It, you know, it's even now, even today, we've picked up, we've actually just picked up uh, quite a big contract with, a, oh, I won't say the name, but it's a film, a, a film company in the States, um, which again, although we've, we've kind of got that, we haven't started because of what's going on, but we will. Yeah. So we've got, we're getting bits and pieces mm -hmm. coming in, um, even through this period of time. Yeah. It's been good. Yeah, it's good, mate. You've got to keep, like we spoke earlier, you've got keep to keep your head away. above yeah, head water, yeah. mate. And it's yeah. such a fucking weird time, but there's nothing else to do but soldier on. Yeah, but even when the world's normal, I'm still plugging away. Yeah, yeah. It's <laughs> so the only it thing works. you can do, yeah, mate, yeah. Yeah. So when you started coming out of uh, like Afghanistan, Iraq, and you came out the army and went into the private kind of side of things, was it easier or was it harder when you started getting into private protection? Uh, what in, in uh, the UK? In the UK, yeah. So actually, in between there, I slotted. A, I missed a little job out in between when I was actually in Afghanistan. We worked eight weeks on, four weeks off, um, and it's actually on one of my four weeks off when I looked after Michael Jackson. Mm -hmm. I just got back. I was in Edinburgh actually. I just got back. A friend of mine um, who was on my rotation lived in Edinburgh, and he said, "Do you want to come up for?" Uh, a couple of nights nights out or whatever and I just got up there I did one night out and then someone called me um, and said did I want to work in London at the time I never really worked in London and I knew that at the end of my Afghanistan stint some stage I was end up coming back here to work so I thought maybe it's a good idea to you know jump on and see what it's all about um, and they wouldn't tell me who it was and I just thought oh, I'll go and do it anyway so I had to get an early flight down I think I went out that night missed my flight in the morning and nearly missed the whole job mm -hmm. because of it yeah. um, managed to get the next flight got down they had to buy a suit so I didn't have time to go home and get a suit to go back to Heathrow to pick this guy up mm -hmm. um, and then it wasn't until we got there that we, they, they told us who it was and then it was just a hectic massively hectic I can't remember if it was seven or ten days now but what was he like Michael Jackson? <sighs> yeah he was alright I mean it's such a hectic job that it's just how many people did he have around him it was five of us all together mm -hmm. um, you know he always has five or six you can't move around but every time we moved anywhere we had what, uh, four or five cars 
Um, but equally, you'd have about 12 taxis following you where fans have paid for the taxi for the whole day. Motorbikes following you. You know, it's just, uh, you couldn't go anywhere without it. It's been an absolute nightmare of a job, mm. really. I mean, it's a good one in terms of prestige, if you like, as a close protection officer. What better person good to look after? Good for the CV, exactly, mate, yeah. But um, the job was, you know, it's a tough one. And mm-hmm. being my first one in London as well, I really sort of had to dig in on mm. that one. <laughs> Did you enjoy that then, realising from being a rack? can get blew up, shot, took away and hung to then fall on Michael Jackson. But even though there's not many shootings here for celebrities or, or the close protection kind of thing, yeah, yeah. was it still as stressful? Yeah, if 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 not, probably more stressful. I mean, by that stage anyway, I'd had enough of the, well, I'd had enough of the shootings. Yeah. <laughs> you know, I didn't care mm-hmm. if I ever saw a shooting again. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. um, so it, it, was a, it was a breath of fresh air. One thing I will say, for, for your first job, it's it's almost in terms of people who look after you could argue it's kind of the peak of your career mm-hmm. and I've just done that in my first job yeah. so you know everything after that is a bit of a downer yeah, really. all the amateur yeah, celebrities yeah. Like, no yeah. who it is. I could have done with that a little bit later yeah. on but yeah no it, it was it was it was good it, you know mm-hmm. I learned um, how different it was and to be fair the, 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 the fundamentals of it wasn't much different you so know, when you do the close protection for a celebrity is there a like a a rotor are you just getting planned to, to do what he's doing or is it all down to you or does like Michael Jackson's team call the shots or is it the boys yeah so to- normally it depends on what, who they are and what they do but certainly in their work hours they've all got agents or managers so you get a full rundown of where they've got to be that day mm-hmm. it gets a bit more up to you maybe in the evenings because after work any of their sort of support staff managers makeup artists you know whatever might be around them all the time they finish when you know when the, the the day's work's done, and then if that person wants to go out of an evening for dinner, um, that's now my day out, you know, on my own because they go out and do that, and you have to be with them everywhere they go. So it, the evenings could get hectic, mm-hmm. um, which is a bit of a pain because you've already done twelve hours or thirteen hours. Yeah. So for celebrities like him, that's kind of status. If he's got six or ten guards with him every day, round the clock, twenty four seven, they must spend what millions and millions of pounds each year. Oh, yeah, I mean, obviously on that particular job, I haven't got a clue what they charge for that, but, yeah, it, it's got to be. And to be fair, everyone what was there, it, it was needed. I don't think mm-hmm. there was anyone there which wasn't. The, the, uh, Bella, Hadid, Kendall, Jenner, Rita Orr, I've been with, it's been me, just just me. The majority of the jobs you do in London, because we're not cheap, mm-hmm. you know, it, it's just one guy. Yeah. So, yeah, um, that's the only job, actually, I've done where I've had more than, more than just me. The very first job as yeah, well. Yeah, so right, again, 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 yeah, 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 again. What was Kendall Jenner like? Yeah, she was good. So that's quite a few number of years ago. Now I'm trying to think how old she was. I think she was maybe 18, 18 or 19. I didn't know who she was. I don't know who any of these people were. Michael mm-hmm. Jackson's probably the only one. I always have to Google people before I start. <laughs> you know I mean? Better not fucking tell them that. I don't, I don't watch, obviously, I've got a bit of social media, but I don't watch TV. I, I don't, you know, mm-hmm. I don't, I don't know. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's just a job. Do you just go in there, blinkers on, just to do the job? It's not as if you can fuck it. It's not like they follow him, the bodyguard, where, what's his yeah. name? Kevin Costner and Whitney Houston. He fucking ends up shagging or not? <laughs> yeah, well, when you when you when you when you do these jobs, you got to know who you're looking after. So yeah. you end up doing a lot of yeah. bit of background research yeah. anyway. But uh, you know, I never heard of Kendall Jenner till the day I picked off at the airport. Really, what was Rita Ora like? Rita Ora, she Rita's seems great. crazy. Yeah, she's she great. She's nuts. been around. For, she's mm-hmm. been around for a while, hasn't she? But yeah, yeah. She's, she's she's really good. Yeah. She's, she's good fun. Mm-hmm. Um, I think the last job I did with her, um, oh, a couple, two or three years ago, I went to Milan for Milan Fashion Week. Was out there for a little bit. Um, was Conor McGregor no there? Nah. That week, nah. nah. So I've seen the two together at a party. I don't know if it was a Milan Fashion Week. Yeah, no, nah, it was good. But I mean, I haven't, I haven't, I haven't done a job for two years now. You're missing it? Why? <laughs> I've done 17 years. I've got a big chunk out somewhere, to be honest with you. Been mm-hmm. between that, I did maritime security as well for just over, or just probably on and off for two years. What's that? So basically, oil tankers and LPG tankers would go down like the Gulf of Aden. Um, mm-hmm. And the Red Sea and around there, they used to get... Um, the pirates? T- yeah, taken over by pirates quite often. Um, so we started going on there. Originally, we went on there, wasn't armed, and we was just a security team on there to sort of guide, you know, help the captain with what to do should we get attacked. Uh, and then as that, that also progressively got worse, so we started carrying firearms on that as well. What was that like? Did you ever get attacked? Uh... It's fraught with problems. Sometimes you go away on a two-week job, and I think once I'll come back like eight weeks later... 
And obviously, what? when you're at sea as well, you don't you, your phone doesn't work. It's all a bit of a nuisance. So I mean, no signal, or nothing. Yeah, no, nah, not really. Sometimes you can use your ship's email system, but generally you try not to get mm-hmm. too involved in what the, you know the, the ship and the captain yeah. are doing. But um, I did transits where we had a couple of Japanese warships taking us down, so we, you know we had nothing to do really because we had them there. I've done other ones on. I was on a gunboat for that was nearly eight weeks, and that was you know probably the worst trip I've ever experienced. However, um, at the same time. I always remember that trip. It Why? Was just because it was crap. What was that? <laughs> it was awful. You know, the conditions were awful. We, we was out there a lot longer than we could, we was meant to be. The, the boat sort of just, you, you couldn't eat, you had to eat holding the plate because you couldn't, you know, it was just horrendous. Mm-hmm. There's nothing good about it. Yeah. Um, but yeah. I'm glad I've done it because it was, it was a bit of a test, if you like. And every, all the lads who were on it, I think it was four of us on that. Yeah. Um, we all still talk about it today, so it must have been yeah. something. How organised are those pirates? Because you see them driving up in their wee wooden boats next to these big tankers and yeah, they still yeah. manage to go on and take over. They're not it. massively organised, but they are good at climbing. Like little monkeys. So what you do in a lot of the bigger tankers is you wire it up with barbed wire. So you normally get, depending on where you get on the vessel, you might get three days before you start getting into mm-hmm. sort of troublesome water. So you spend that time wiring up the whole of the vessel, um, which again, it's not a great job because burning hot out there normally mm-hmm. um, you're wearing gloves bar, razor wire you know the amount of cuts you get putting that stuff up um, and equally to go into Port Suez in Egypt you've not had any wire so you have to take it all down after as well which again is another nuisance but mm-hmm. I, I only did maritime security um, because it was part of the private security world at the time and I kind of been ticking all the boxes and you know done a bit of everything and I didn't want to miss out on on that yeah. basically Obviously, we had to do courses and that for mm-hmm. that as well, you know, sea survival courses and the ship security officer courses. So I had to go and do work down in Paul, but um, I, that's one of my main reasons why I don't miss it. I've kind of ticked every box. You completed that? Yeah, but it, it, I'm sure there is one or two other things out there that mm-hmm. you could do, but n- nothing I want to do. I've ticked every box I wanted to do. Yeah, better relaxation now, better your time. Yeah, I mean, I've still got the company, obviously, mm-hmm. so that, you know, I'm still involved in it to a certain extent, mm-hmm. more on the business side now is what I do, and that I'm kind of, most people don't really see me. In fact, a lot of people probably don't even know I'm involved in that business. We've got a lot of guys that work for us, they probably don't even know I'm involved. I'm, I'm very much in the office and, mm-hmm. um, you know, the business side of it, but, I enjoy that now. Yeah. I do like doing that. And obviously with this other stuff I've got going on with the acting magazines and everything else, mm-hmm. and it gives me time to do that as well. Yeah. Busy, man. Yeah, it is at the moment. Yeah. Half five, wake up, bed at 11, I think, at the moment, seven days a week. <sighs> Fuck that, man. Yeah. Fuck that, mate. Yeah. As much as I'm busy, I work cost me. I had yeah. a wee nap before you came up, mate. I think it's the only, <laughs> I it's the only one getting so done I, did, the, I had a wee nap, so did Nick. Yeah. You just, you just, and if he went after I kept, so did I. So see if somebody was climbing up that boat. If you get the right, can you blast them? Shoot them? Yeah, once we get on board, once they get on board, we used to carry two types of weapons in the end, with the shotguns if they got on board, and then we had like a, oh, I can't even remember what it was, some sort of, some sort of mm-hmm. sniper rifle, but without a scope, I think, for yeah. when they were further off. Yeah, but we never, I never, mm-hmm. never had to get Because I had a boy on, a few of them were on a boat and they had guns, but they all get charged with the guns. So they oh, did really? a few years ago in India. Oh, yeah, because yeah. they, went, they went ashore with them. Yeah, yeah they yeah. get done, man. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They're all I've done, seen, I think, yeah. five or six years in India in yeah, jail, man. Yeah, that's a big problem, even though they think... Uh, they I, the, I, they I know what you're talking about, and I think they had weapon, per- yeah. weapon permits, yeah. 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 They fucked them over, man. They made examples Yeah, they them, end yeah. up spending four years or something in India we, we kind of had the same problem at Seychelles we was we was looking after a survey vessel but we was on a small gunboat because mm-hmm. the, they didn't want the client vessel they didn't want the the weapons and ammunition on their boat Yeah. so we had them on ours and we went to the Seychelles to bunker which basically means go and refuel the ship and you know supplies and everything else and they went in first and we've been on this thing that's been chipping around for days and days and days um, we thought oh great finally you know get to go and Seychelles honeymoon destination mm-hmm. Um, and then we had to sit 12 miles out because we had weapons on board so we, we anchored up for another two weeks at the mm-hmm. Seychelles and couldn't go ashore yeah would you never do the SES or anything like that when you were coming out of the army would you never do the training for that 20 well, years ago oh um, yeah I mean that was my that would have been my uh, I'd have, that would have been my progression when actually when I left um, after Iraq I got the opportunity to go to stay on with the army and go to a um, go to a unit um, which was along those lines. And I'd just been offered a job in London to work back in Iraq. Mm-hmm. And at the time, you know, it was on like 10 grand a month or something. I can't remember what I got paid in the army now, but it was like two maybe, I don't know. Um, and obviously the money, it won me over. 
As you've always done yeah, it. Yeah, and actually, when I, when I finished with the military, I kind of had a, I kind of had a bit of a deal that I was going to do a two-year leave of absence, um, go and do the private security work, buy a house because the money was obviously quite good back then. Um, and then go back to the army because I still have only been 25, 26 years old when I've gone back to the army. And I love the army. I, I had no other reason to, to finish doing it. You know, I had loads of different things mapped out I wanted to do within it. It just all come to a, an end. I think when I started the private security job in Iraq, um, it just went on, you know, one thing to another. And I did three mm -hmm. years there in Afghanistan and so on and so on. I was like, no, I'm not going back to the army now. Yeah. It's, it's done. How did you get into the acting then? Because you've been in like Sherlock Holmes, you've been a stunt double for, is it, Batista? Dave, yeah, Dave Batista, yeah. Yeah, the wrestler? Um, he's a big lump. No, twice the size, size of me. I don't know if you know how I got that, but... Um, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, he's about fucking 22. I had to wear his store, costume and it was like his, his shoulders on it were down by my elbows. Um, so when I was in Iraq, private security, there was a guy there, a lot older than me, and he used to run the army where all the weapons were kept on our, on our place. Um, and he was a security advisor for the film Troy. Um, and I was just talking to him one day and he mentioned about that and I thought, oh, film work, that sounds interesting. And I you know, just asked him a bit more about it. And he gave me a number, a mobile number of someone to call in London, wrote it down on the card, I put it in, in, a, in a day sack in, in my room and left it. Obviously, that was like 2006. Um, I then did the time in Afghanistan after that. I then come back to London. Um, I did various jobs in London. And then around 2010, in fact, the first job I had in London, um, there was a house provided with it for the whole of the security teams. It wasn't just for me, but you know, all the lads who were on that security team could use the house. So that's when I moved up into into London. At the end of that, um, when that job finished, I, I started my business up about the same time that job finished. Um, I thought, well, I need to get an apartment somewhere around here because I'm staying up in London now. Uh, I got a flat share at the time with, with, with someone else who was in the industry. Uh, and I, I remember when I was unpacking my kit, that card dropped out my bag and I thought, oh, I forgot about that. And I looked at it and I thought, actually, I'm even living in London now as well. And this really, it's, it's place was in Shepherd's Bush. Mm -hmm. um, so I thought, I'll, I'll give them a call. So the next day I called them up and they said, you know, they'd send me a link, something on an email. And, um, like 25 pages of stuff to fill out and everything else. So there was another lad with me, he wanted to do it as well. Um, he sent me that, there's all sorts of stuff on there. And I thought, well, if I don't do it, I'm not going to get a look in at, you know, doing anything with films. So I, I, I filled it all out. The other guy decided he didn't want to do it because it's too much like hard work. So he, he, he'd give it a rest. Mm -hmm. um, and then I, I did the whole lot. And then uh, they replied to me saying that they got it. But this was like, uh, maybe September time of 2010, I think. Um, and they said that, that we're not, thanks for everything, but we're not taking them until August next year. So I thought, well, that's a bit of a pain. But then I thought, well, I've set the seed now, you know, it's there, so come August next year. I'll just forget about it now until it comes around. Um, and I was in the gym back in the days where I could leave my phone in the locker when I was trying to do it anymore. Um, Why? Too many people want after me all the time. They always want something, so I can't. Do they? I can't. Yeah, yeah. Or if I get a job in and it's got to be done, mm -hmm. I can't like answer yeah. it three hours later mm -hmm. or something. Um, so uh, I remember going back to my locker and I had a, I had a voicemail and there was a guy on there. He says, hi, my name's Chuck. Um, I was wondering if you'd be available to fly out to Morocco on Monday to take part in the Green Zone film with Matt Damon. I thought I should wind up because they've told me <laughs> they told me August and a few of the yeah. lads of this job I was on as well they knew I'd done it so I thought someone's winding me up yeah. so I thought well, I don't know and I looked at it I listened to it again this is before iPhone as well we're going back to an old Nokia or whatever mm -hmm. and then I think I googled the number and it came up in Shepherd's Bush I thought mm -hmm. oh mate this is I think this is it. Yeah. This is the one. <laughs> <laughs> so, the paranoia yeah, kicking in. Yeah, I, yeah. you know what lads are like. Yeah. <laughs> Get all excited, guess yeah. where I'm going. <laughs> like, yeah. no, you're not. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, yeah, I got that and I rang him up and he said, yeah, it's legit, could I fly Monday? I still had one day left on the job that I was on. To the, um, I actually finished on the Tuesday. So I said to one of the lads, look, I've got like, I think it's like two months or six or eight weeks in Morocco. I don't want to lose it just because of one day on this job. Can you cover me? And he said, yeah. And I, I literally just flew straight out to Morocco on that Monday. And then, yeah, I think it's six or eight weeks I was gone for doing that. And that's like my first ever film. Mm -hmm. How was Matt Damon? 
It's yeah, he was good. He wasn't there for the whole thing. He he come on and off throughout mm-hmm. the throughout the uh, yeah. time there. But yeah, yeah. I mean, they're all Jason Isaacs was in as well. He's good. Paul Greengoss was director. Mm-hmm. Um, it's good fun. But one of the things I liked about it was when we was doing a lot of the scenes, you're running around shooting and no one was shooting back. Yeah, it was exactly like it was in Iraq, mm-hmm. but just without the hassle yeah. of, you know, the, wor- <laughs> the worry of it all. Yeah. So your first fucking close protection, you were with Michael Jackson and the first one on set, you were with Matt Damon. I know, and I didn't, I didn't really plan it. Where like else that. do you go after that? Do you know what I mean? Every other film set, you were thinking, shite actors. I don't <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, my expectations are high. Uh, what an actor he is. Yeah, he's great. And he d- they done good. Well, Hunting Man was unbelievable. I mean, is it Ben Affleck? Yeah, unbelievable film. Yeah, I mean he's done some great ones. He did all the Bourne series, but yeah. he's, he's, he's yeah. really, really, really good. Mm-hmm. And Sherlock, Sherlock come along as well. Um, was that Guy Ritchie directing yeah, that Guy one? Yeah, Guy Ritchie. Yeah, um, that was. Uh, I actually missed a little bit of that. I doing too many things at once. Yeah. I did. Uh, I did a load of filming down at Chatham Dockyard, um, and then there was a gap of maybe three weeks, or might might be a little bit longer than that, four or five weeks. Um, and because of the co- continuity, you can't just bin it halfway through. Mm-hmm. And uh, I went away on ship, did maritime security, which is only maybe a ten-day job, and I got stuck on it. So I didn't turn, <laughs> I didn't oh, turn shit. up for the next part of the film. Mm-hmm. And then I come up? on again at the yeah. end. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Shit, and the man. End. <laughs> yeah. Fucking goddamn like, shit. Sorry. Shit, <laughs> sorry. Who was um, was it? Jude Law. That was in that. Yeah, yeah. Robert Downey Jr. Jude Law. Yeah. yeah. What a, Robert, what a story he's got. Yeah. So he has. Yeah, he's a character he is. From bang on the gear, because he was a heavy actor when he was younger. Yeah. And then he fucked it. Yeah. And then he's pulled it back again. It'd be one of the biggest, highest grossing earners in. Yeah, I mean, always, always people. Guy Ritchie as well. You know, he's, he's so good. What a story he's got so as well, Guy as well, Ritchie, yeah. man. Yeah. He, the, uh, what, is it a gentleman? Yeah, that, his latest one, yeah. As a cracking film. Yeah. Cracking film. Yeah, he's done, he's done some good ones. So we'll see when you're in with all these big guns do you try and network as well try and get an in without <laughs> harassing them yeah I mean because there's a fine line of networking yeah, being, being a pain in the ass yeah, mate, yeah, you know? yeah. and yeah. I'm, I'm quite lucky that I always anything I do wherever I go I always providing I've got the time if I if you're only on a job for one day just keep your mouth shut to the job going because you're not going to achieve getting in with yeah. someone in, mm-hmm. you know so but when, you're, when I'm on anything over any significant amount of time quite often I look a bit different to what the other people do there, which obviously straight away it allows me to stand out slightly. Mm-hmm. Just do as you're told. That's the biggest thing. Do as you're told. So many people don't. Yeah. If you do as you're told, you stand out in an instant anyway. I learned that quite quite quickly. And mm-hmm. actually in the end I ended up with some quite good parts just because I did as I was told. Mm-hmm. Um but yeah I do. I I tell you why I network a lot actually on Instagram. That seems to get me I've, there's a couple of directors, one in LA at the moment who was doing a film this year, it's been put back now. Um and actually he he offered me a couple of parts in that and that was uh, I think the it's going to be um, oh, well, I can't remember his name Lawrence Fishburne was, uh, who's that? he's uh, he's been in lots of different so I'm trying to think what films he's been in I'm terrible with films um, mm-hmm. if I showed you a picture you'd know yeah 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 yeah. Um, the previous film we'd done with Lawrence Fishburne and Nicolas Cage mm-hmm. so I mean he, he, he's he's knocked yeah, out some he good he's, yeah. he's knocked out some good films and, and then there's another guy here who's um, I'm hoping to have a meeting with him in December I don't, I don't really meet these people to get work as such I, I, I meet them to get an understanding because all actors all mm-hmm. have been actors as well yeah. get an understanding of what you know what things I mm-hmm. can expect to do and not to do and, then, and they've all been very helpful so far did you do acting classes or anything? so no <laughs> <laughs> just kind of um, I've, I've done I have done mm-hmm. stuff I've done uh, a, a few short films and stuff like that just to mm-hmm. get a bit of time in really yeah. but um, equally uh, I've got an acting diploma to do actually in two weeks time which is a month at Pinewood to start with and then um, we'll see what happens after that see is that like an intense course yeah very yeah but you'll be used to that shit yeah well I mean I'm not isn't it crazy you'll probably be used to fucking standing in a rack trying to get fucking your head blown off but then you go into an acting class and you shit yourself I think I got an email from today <laughs> and said can you make sure you watch when Harry met Sally before you turn up uh-huh. So I love following. That's gonna be the yeah. yeah. That's gonna be the hardest bit of the whole course. I think. Yeah. Watch that. But I mean, <laughs> <laughs> but yeah. I'll, I'll do it if it's Harry kills kill uh-huh. Sally. I'm more likely to be in it. <laughs> <laughs> so how do you? So how through your life going through for the British Army, close protection, starting your own business? How's your? What's your life like in a daily routine? What's your up at 5 a.m. you says so what do you yeah, do? Yeah, at the moment it's a little bit different because I've obviously lost a lot of time over this lockdown period and stuff. So. Mm-hmm. 
Um, I've got two fitness shoots in November, which is almost well, it's a week after the acting di diploma. So I've got to try and I've got about another inch to lose on my waist at the moment, which I'd do by then easily. But I've got to try and keep that up over the, the period I'm doing the acting. Mm -hmm. So um, at the moment, it's been pretty brutal. I've been doing gym at half five in the morning for an hour. Um, then home, breakfast, shower, change, keep my kit together and I go to the gym again for nine to do weights from nine to half ten. Then it's straight to the office from that gym. Um, office till five, straight back home, uh, back to the gym for an hour again, doing cardio again. What? Yeah, and then at home by half eight, call the girlfriend, go to sleep. Foxy, I do a jog in the morning and I think I've done a ton. Yeah, <laughs> but on top of that as well, I'm... I'm, I'm I eat six to eight times a day, so all my Which foods. Calories, 4,000, 5,000 calories a day, you on? I, I, all I do is no carbs Monday to Friday, I mean carbs at weekends. So by, <sighs> by today and, and tomorrow, I'm, I'm hanging out. That's fucking discipline mm. to the highest level. So no breads, no pastas, no nothing. No, I don't eat anything. Like, do you know what? Once I'm doing it... So how's your energy amazing. levels then? Low. Yeah. But, but I've been doing it for so long now, like and over the... I probably mm -hmm. first started... I was quite a late dieter. I mm -hmm. probably started dieting properly when I was 36. So um, last year, I did men's fitness in a magazine called Train as well. So uh, GQ, in fact, I did fitness in GQ. Vogue, what was this? Vogue? Uh, so Vogue, this is how it's kind of started for me. Back in mm -hmm. 2006, when I used to look after Bella Hadid, Vogue picked me up as a real style star of London Fashion mm -hmm. Week. Um, uh, and they reported on me quite often when I was with these models, just because of what I wear, mm -hmm. um, which is nothing exceptional by the way it's just no, I've seen your change on Instagram see. no, you yeah. look smart as fuck so um, that's how it kind of started and more and more people are getting interested on top of that I branded Jason Statham all the time I mean don't get me wrong there's a lot worse piece of people to be branded as mm -hmm. um, <laughs> <laughs> I get, I'm not moaning too much uh, but that is always coming up in articles yeah. um, I, obviously previously I had done film work and I had been around the film you know I've done um couple of adverts and obviously doubling for Dave as well so mm -hmm. I've kind of been around the film side of it I get stopped in the street some days particularly at the moment because I'm a bit leaner mm -hmm. um, and people go excuse me excuse me you turn around they're like oh I think they realise yeah. they're a little bit dishevelled yeah. afterwards you know exactly <laughs> what you're going to say and so, no it's not him uh -huh. it's not him uh -huh. um, so I get I get sort of branded with that slightly um, yeah, and people have said over the years, you look like someone who should be in a film, you look like someone who should be in a mm -hmm. film. And I think that's kind of spurred me on because I do enjoy doing that. So mm -hmm. that's what's kind of spurred me on to maybe push that side of it more. And obviously some of the opportunities I've, I've had already with being in films, um, if, it's a, if it's a small chink in the armour, I like to expose it. Yeah. But you're perfect for kind of Guy Ritchie films. I don't know how your acting is, but what kind of film would you like to... Yeah, I mean, but, look, everything I've done, I mean, I've been a prison inmate before, I've been a prison officer before, military, uh, you know, I've been in a couple of gangster things, one American mm -hmm. one. Um, it's always that. Yeah. Bodyguard, I think I've been a couple of times in a few kind of BBC things. Do you not mind being tired with that brush, or do you kind of want to try something different? <laughs> Push the boat a bit? I'm not, um, I'm not, I'm not three years at acting school. Mm -hmm. So for me to be a bodyguard on screen or... You it's know, perfect for you. It's easy, yeah. All, yeah. I'm, all I'm really doing at the moment, and certainly for this acting diploma, is working on my dialogue and, uh, you know, making sure that my that side of what I do is is right. But in terms of the, the actual acting itself, most of the stuff I get, it's just not acting for me. Just normal? It's pretty normal. Yeah. You know, all the weapons handling, and, and mm -hmm. the running around, jumping, mm -hmm. shooting... You know, quite often on, on film sets, in fact, I've actually helped directors where to stand because all I do is first start off just standing by where I would stand. Mm -hmm. And normally that's, that's, you know, that's good enough for them. So it's a, lot, it's a lot for me to be able to put back yeah. in doing those type of movies. How's the models and stuff to work with? Are they a pain in the ass or are they okay? <sighs> they work hard for youngins. Yeah, yeah. They work really hard, yeah. yeah. They do a lot of hours. Um, no, they're great, to be honest. Are they? Yeah, I've never had a problem with any I've never had a problem with anyone I've looked after. Yeah. At the end of the day, I don't have to look after anyone. Yeah. So if I think someone's gonna be a nuisance or I do a day with someone, I think oh, I'm not putting up with this. I mean, and I'll just mm -hmm. that's not You've I'm worked with my boy Dizzy Rascal, who's an absolute yeah. legend, love Dizzy, so shout out to Dizzy. Dizzy's always um, great as well because yeah. he's he's so easy to work with mm -hmm. and he's just such a nice guy. So laid back, man. Yeah. But his work ethic's second to none. Twenty years in the industry, and he's still oh, kicking he on. Works, he works at it. Yeah, yeah he works. So this, he's got a new album coming out, which we'll actually plug. Um, 
October, I think it's out the nine for the thirteenth yeah, October. Yeah, so I've seen that come yeah. up on his Instagram. Yeah, twenty years later, man, he's still yeah. producing. Yeah, no, he's great, and he's 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 got a good team around him yeah. as well. They're all very, they're all well suited. They're mm-hmm. all very nice. I don't think he would fuck about with any edits. He's even when the interviews, you can, even though I love the interview, but you can tell it wouldn't take any shit. No, do you know what I mean? He's obviously been in the industry too long. He knows. Yeah, he knows. He knows exactly them. what he should be getting. Yeah, yeah, for sure. Yeah, mm-hmm. I'm actually I'm third in line on that job. So there's a guy, a good friend of mine who I still do a little bit. I must, I must. I haven't done anything for a while. Certainly this year, but I've got a, sort of two really good friends who look after people pretty much mm-hmm. full time, um, who both are both celebrities, and because of that, celebrities are a bit of a creature habit, and they like the same people. Trust them. So yeah. So often, although those guys are full time. Um, there is one or two others that jump on those people, if you like, and obviously sometimes I do do it. And the only reason why I still do it now really is to help them out, to be honest. Yeah. So say so you get a phone call for the business and it was a mega star, you go, fuck it, I'm going to take that job? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, no. If it's, if it's taken like, uh, so Dizzy and Halsey, yeah, are the two I still jump on every now and then if, if needed because they're both, both friends of mine, it's their job, so yeah. I still do it. But, Outside of that, now I mean, certainly this film contract we just run, we just got with the with my security company. Now that will require, you know, a number of a list celebrities over the next couple of years looking after. I won't, I won't get involved. Yeah. The more I do with this stuff as well, and more I do in films, if I, if I, if the filming takes off for me, you know, in the way that I want it to, I can't be walking down the road next to someone who maybe isn't known and people start coming up to me, you know, I'm going to be looking after the guy yeah. or the woman, you know, it's just not going to work. So yeah, so that's, if you're getting that's why I've taken a side yeah, step now. Yeah, a few big films and for you know what, people are coming mm. up and asking for your pictures instead of the embarrassing when you're trying to look after someone. Yeah. So it, no, that's why I've taken a, I've taken a side step now from doing that. And I don't, mm. I, I'm glad I've done that because I've just, I've exhausted, for me, I've exhausted the private security industry for all that time. It's changed a lot. It's not something I particularly enjoy as much as I used to now. Um, but equally, I can't, you know, it's, it's made me a small fortune, to be honest yeah. with you, over the years, all the different mm-hmm. things I've done. And I've been around the world as well. I've been so many different countries, like 65 different countries, probably. Um, Private planes? Yeah, on some occasions, yeah. Boats, planes. Um, it's all everything's paid for, obviously. Uh-huh. Um, so I've had a good run. You know, I've mm-hmm. got nothing bad to say about it at all, really. It's not for me anymore, but I've got nothing bad to say about it. Yeah, you've completed that. Yeah, yeah. No, it's been looking back. I mean, to be honest with you, looking back, I'm surprised how much I have done. You mm-hmm. forget. Just yeah. get on with it and do it, don't you? It's when weird, you isn't it? When, it, you, it? Yeah. when you actually do the life and looking, people looking from the outside, they think, oh, that's a great life. But nothing really fucking changes, done it? No, nah. your, your mind. Like, I was talking to, I don't know who I had on the show. Oh, I was talking to uh, Pablo Escobar's son's um, di- direct, uh, like, P- PR today. And he was saying, yeah, I was like, what's it like? What was that? It's, it doesn't feel anything. The same as people tell me how well I'm doing. It doesn't feel... I just nah. do it. Yeah, it you just, just feels fucking it. normal. So even you working with the top celebrities and shit, even though it's still good talking about it, but for you it's kind of fuck it, isn't it? Yeah, it's another day at work, yeah. isn't it? Really. Would you ever write a book? Uh, we've touched on that at the moment. Uh, one of my, I could do. <laughs> There's <laughs> enough. <there. laughs> yeah. One of my problems with it at the moment is um, the reason why we've held back slightly on it is one because of time. I mm. like physically can't really do much more at the moment. Yeah. Six hours sleep, so I just want to start mm. eating into that. Um, but two, I feel that at the moment I'm kind of tinkering on something new, you know, with the acting thing. Do I do a book on the private security thing, which I don't really want to particularly do because there's so many books out there now of yeah. army and out in Iraq and mm. Afghanistan and shoot them up books and that, which are a great read, don't get me mm. wrong, but I don't really want to go into that category. I think if I did a book now, I'd like to maybe try and achieve something over the next five or ten years in the acting world mm. uh, and do it more as a life book. And it's all, all the of different thing. things that I've been through, yeah, yeah. And hopefully, you know, I still hopefully be a business owner as well as being maybe an established mm-hmm. actor if I'm lucky, you know, blah, 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 rather than being a, you know, bodyguard out in Iraq. Yeah, yeah. The same kind of story. There's a lot of it yeah, out there. Yeah, 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 yeah. You know, I don't really, there's a lot of stuff we did out there, you know, and it, I'm sure it's interesting to a lot of people. Mm-hmm. For me, it's, again, that was a great job. But sometimes things are better left forgotten. Left in the past. How does it feel for you to talk about like, stuff in the past? Because even though, like you say, you can bl- block it out and train hard, but even though all the emotion and shit, you've still seen a lot of nasty shit. Does it? Do you get drained or anything thinking uh, about it or talking about I it? I don't. I don't. I don't really talk about it that much, and for mm. a simple reason, if you're talking about it to someone who doesn't know about it, it can sound like you're you're bloating. Yeah. Because some of it can be a bit far fetched mm-hmm. what you can get involved in. 
So if someone is generally interested because they've got an interest in the Middle East and they know maybe other soldiers or private security, mm -hmm. you know, I might touch on certain bits. I never really go into real big detail because sometimes it just sounds like you're big time in it all the time. Yeah. You know, going over the top of it, and you just, you know, there's a couple of things I've done in the past, and I, thought, I just don't tell anyone. I think no one's ever going to believe that. Yeah, <laughs> it's just no, you know. So, mm -hmm. yeah, I don't really. If, if people are interested, and they ask me about. it, I'm happy. It's not a secret mm -hmm. by by any stretch of imagination. Not a secret, but um, it's just it is what it is, isn't it? It's mm -hmm. just another part of what I've done. You know, I don't really see it as because you've lived that. Yeah, and, and there's hundreds of guys who've been private security mm -hmm. contracts. There's not the only one. You know I mean, there's, there's lots of guys who are in the military in Iraq and Afghanistan, Falklands, if you want to go back that way. You know, yeah. it, it's it's not, I'm not unique. Mm -hmm. So I don't like to come across that I think you, I may be because yeah. I'm certainly not. Yeah. Do you know what are I mean? you still in contact with a few of the boys from 20 years ago? Yeah, very few. I mean, a lot of them, some of them stayed in a lot longer, but most majority now. In fact, I've only got one friend who's still in the army, and he wasn't in with me, but he joined up about a year before me. He he he's actually, I think he's a captain now. He started mm -hmm. off as a soldier, so he's done really well. But um, yeah, majority of the guys. I mean, mm -hmm. it's a different thing now. Like I I remember Iraq with the, with the military. It's been amazing. If I went back to one of them uh, countries now, would the army be a totally different thing? Different people, different you know set up. It's always things are never the same when you go back. Yeah. You can even do it on holiday. You go on holiday, you have an amazing holiday because you're with the right people. Mm -hmm. You go back there next year, maybe with a different set of people or yeah, something's shit. changed and it's shit. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Do you know what I mean? So, but you remember that time you went before. So I don't ever wish I could have times again mm -hmm. unless it could be the same exactly. And obviously things can't. Yeah, of course. Things move on. Yeah. So the Things are always going to be Once different. I've done it, I've done it. Yeah. That's the way I look at it. Where's the best place you've ever been in the world? Uh... I don't get wowed over with places that much, if I'm honest. I don't really like to go back to the same place twice. My girlfriend lives in Canada, in Toronto, so that's obviously a place that I end up going a lot because she's there. Mm -hmm. But if I can, I like to... I mean, you probably see by my career, I get bored easily. I, I have to mm -hmm. move on and do something more and more and more and different. So it's the same when I go, why well, spend four or five grand on holiday or whatever and go back to the same hotel and sleep in the same bed, eat the same mm -hmm. lobster by the same pool with mm -hmm. the same annoying people where we were there last year. <laughs> so yeah. I mean, when I, there's, there's how many other countries I haven't been to. Yeah. So I like to try and change every time, but I'll probably say up with it um, for a holiday, probably... Maldives or Thailand. Is it nice in Maldives? I've always looked at it, but I don't know if I'd be too bored there. The thing with it is, is it's nice. Don't do mm. too long. It's boring. Yeah, I thought. I, it's... But equally, I think in like six years, it'll be underwater. Well, that because of the seas rising. Obviously, yeah. they're all small islands. Mm -hmm. So if you don't get it in soon, it's going to make your mind up for you anyway, yeah. and you won't be going. So I always fancied like the Himalayas or Tibet, something quite. Uh, Vietnam, some I don't know, man. I've always kind of looked at those places. For I'm not something. very good at um, giving. Bearing in mind my background, I'm not really good at roughing it anymore. <laughs> <laughs> just luxury five, you know I mean? six, yeah. and seven star. I can't stomach it these days. I mean, obviously you do what you got to do, and I could yeah. if I had to. But you know, given the choice, uh -huh. I'm more of a hotel man. And uh, would you ever do like, any of the SCS shows? Well, I actually written a show. Um, went out to various production companies in the UK and um, states as well i think it went to national history channel discovery channel and national geographic out mm -hmm. there uh, and a number of production companies here um which is kind of it's basically a, a bodyguard show to see if you had what it took to be a um a professional bodyguard that got it got knocked back uh, the reason why it got knocked back is because they tried doing it before um at middleton they were going to try to do something about middleton mm -hmm. And for some reason, it didn't get picked up. So at the moment, it's been shelved. I've had, I have had two, um, two companies interested in me repitching it in eighteen months. So I haven't given up hope on it. Mm -hmm. um, obviously, if I was to get someone to take that on, then you know I would, I'd be involved in that myself. I should, I should imagine. Yeah. So I would, <clears throat> yeah. I would. The bigger your stock becomes, and the more acting jobs, then people just want to work with you yeah. anyway. So it's yeah. just like keeping, because I've got things in the back burner that I know are going to be mega. Yeah, yeah. But if I'd promoted them two years ago or published them two years ago, I've tried to network with them. People would have said, nah, but now I'm growing a platform. So any idea or any vision I have, people yeah. are kind of, I want to work with them. It becomes easier. It's fucking crazy. Yeah. Even though the ideas, yeah, you know, know, are yeah, golden. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, 
Because my stuff's getting watched. The stuff I produced two years ago, the documentaries are still getting watched to this day because the more traffic goes towards that, they go, fuck me, that's amazing. But yeah. it's just all about, it's constant networking, constant that's hustle. That's why I've got a good, you know, good, uh, I think you spoke to already, my PR. Yeah. You know, she's great. And that's why we push the PR so much because mm-hmm. it's, it's helped me even get a better acting parts because yeah. I'm more known to people now. It's out business. There. So yeah, it's, it's great. For, I've actually got a... Um, like a fashion label as well, which I've done nothing with yet. But mm-hmm. again, if, if, if my exposure does get bigger and bigger, yeah. it's too early now. But yeah. you know, I've got a number of things in the pipeline, which, like you just said, you know, sit on them for now and yeah. use them at the right time. But sometimes I want, sometimes I want everything done I yesterday. Know, yeah, but you can ruin it, can't you? Yeah, if you go too early, you got to hold back. Fuck. Do you know what I mean? Hold back. It's just all about you're clearly head screwed on. You've clearly got vision, clothing brands, own protection company. You're fucking flying, doing the acting. There's just so much, man. And I always believe everything's limitless. It's all down to the individual Everything how far I they do, want to I take it. I have to do the be- or try to do the best. And even if it's not the best or that, it's the best I can do at least. Mm-hmm. And I've always been, you know, I've always been like that. And I don't always get, I'm, I'm a bit of a slow grower with a lot of things like that. And I'm not, you know, like my security company, I've had it 10 years now. Maybe someone, maybe I'm sure people have started a security company and got to where I am now in five years. But I always get there. Yeah. It doesn't get, you know, it doesn't, get binned I always get there yeah, you, you don't quit long, no if it takes me longer I'll get knocked back I always get there in the end. Yeah. And, I, and I'm aware some things take me longer than other people but I don't care because I always get there I would you yeah know. but they tend to see the ones who grow up faster as the ones who burn out quicker yeah so it is because yeah, every yeah. consistency yeah. everything's just about pushing the boundaries and, and baby steps as long as you're pushing it inch by inch every day then nothing else is matters so it doesn't matter if it's 10 years 20 years but it's easy to make it it's fucking hard to maintain yeah so it doesn't matter. If somebody yeah. And that's the other thing, the foundations have got to be good. Yeah. Because like, you should be a flash in the pan, otherwise. Million percent. That's a waste yeah, of time. yeah. So. This is why my foot's on the floor, because if I quit, there's some there's thousands of other people out there doing podcasts. Yeah, yeah. I want to be the elite, not yeah. just the UK, but worldwide. Yeah, and I'm yeah, going right, to, yeah. and I'm bang on course. I mean, to that's it. the thing, isn't it? Worldwide, yeah. international. You've yeah, got to be because people say, uh, when I started off in Glasgow, then I, because my accent's different from where I used to speak two or three years ago. It had to quiet, no quiet it down, but slow it down, speak a bit more properly. Just to have people going, he's fucking talking differently. <laughs> I just wanted to have a different audience. Yeah. Wider audience, London, Manchester, yeah, Liverpool. Yeah, yeah, Don't yeah. want to be one dimensional. Yeah. And everything, listen, I'll complete the fucking world stage, mate. And if I need to get a fucking rocket to the moon and interview aliens, I'll do it just to take it to a different fucking uh, level. The thing is, you, everything, everything I've done and I've noticed that if you keep plugging away, mm-hmm. regardless... You always you, something will give in the end. Yeah, you know anyone I know who doesn't get on with something because they don't really give it a chance. You just keep smashing away, put the hours in, keep smashing away, mm-hmm. at it. and then in the end it pop. And the amount of people, you know, people look at me and see what stuff, some of the stuff I've done, and they see it as I don't know. I've rung up Michael Jackson's manager and said, "Can I look after him tomorrow?" Mm-hmm. And, and I've just rung up, you know, a film company and said, "And they've just put me in a film." So it's not none of it's been like that. It's all been engineered yeah. right from the very early days of me meeting people and, and yeah. you know, the day I spoke to the guy on in the in the armory about working on films, there was another six guys there with me. Well, no one else asked for a card with the number on it. Mm-hmm. You know, so it all. I think it's how you present yourself as well. Do you believe in like manifestation, the law of attraction? Yeah. Like visualising and you are what you think and stuff like that? Yeah, I mean, the other thing I get as well, certainly when it's come to the bodyguard side of things, I look like what people think a bodyguard should look like. Yeah. And that's helped me, obviously. I, I mean, I know it has. You've still got to be good, otherwise you're going to get booed, <laughs> you're going to get booed off <laughs> yeah, the job, yeah. do you know what I mean? But, uh-huh. but the people do have a perception of what a bodyguard may look like, mm-hmm. maybe because of the films or, or, or whatever, you know, and often they're a lot taller than I am as well, they think yeah. they're going to get. But you're suited and booted, Hermes belt on, top of the range fucking, the kettle on the wrist. Yeah. So you do, you <laughs> yeah. look the part, but again, you've got to promote yourself because you're thinking, if they're getting papped here and if I'm looking in a fucking three-piece suit, that's the way I'd be thinking, looking this fucking Yeah, well, bomb. no one wants any yeah. photograph looking shit So some celebrity today. will be going, do you know what? Fuck that fat guy at six feet eight. Right. I want this fucking guy right. from London. It's and that's, that's the thing, it's making a difference, isn't it? Yeah. If, if you you know, your skills and your ability might be as good as the other guy, but mm. if you can, if you can pull something that he hasn't got, then great. But I'll be honest with you, I never did it for that. You know, I've always dressed like like that yeah when i went to work i wore what i would have worn whether bella or kendall or anyone else mm-hmm. was in or not you know i didn't like have a particular set of kit just for front, <laughs> front of pabs yeah yeah you know so and sometimes people think i think mm-hmm. they think i did you know yeah. i think they thought i used to just dress up for these these things but it's yeah. just my normal clothes yeah you know? it wasn't really making an effort so but look where the jobs it's got you the modeling the front page yeah, no, of totally. magazines yeah I mean, business I've done, I've done something like i don't know 
25 30 magazines mm -hmm. i think i've got new york post coming out this sunday mm -hmm. which is a print edition um once i've done this not next lot of fitness um shoots in november we're looking to try and do a front cover next year that's mm -hmm. something i haven't done i'm gonna be a little bit careful with the fitness stuff i don't want to be known as a fitness person um because I, how many hats have i got you know i can't do everything so i'd like to do a front cover and then i'm probably going to ease up on the fitness i've got quite a lot of fitness stuff out there at the moment does that mean when you can ease up on that your eating can ease up eat more eat more yeah, carbs I can, eat, I can eat like a normal person yeah, yeah no i can but equally you know i've got this acting diploma and a couple of weeks i've got to do a show wheel at the end of it to give you know mm -hmm. send out to different directors and producers yeah. so i can't be fat in that you know mm -hmm. and the thing is you never know when you'll be i got called for a, a photo shoot the other week um that's for New York Post, actually. I sent a photographer out. And if I'm not somewhere near where I am now, I never know when I'm going to get a call. Mm -hmm. You know, I can't... I have to be very careful now because yeah. obviously this has taken off a lot more now than what it has done previously for me. So more so than ever now. I've got to be careful. I don't know what... Imagine they see my show and I look like this and then they want to cast me for a part in the new Bond film and I'm 20 stone heavier. Mm -hmm. You know, I've lost the part, so yeah. I, I've got to. So you need to keep on your league. Yeah, to stay day. on it. Yeah, I haven't got to be as I haven't got to be as lean as I'm going to be for the shoot. I can come back a little bit, but mm -hmm. I, I can't get. You know. Before you do a shoot, which are which are cut like? Do you drop your carbs? Do you drop your calories? I can't drop that any more than I am at the moment. Yeah. To be honest with you, I know you must be fucking drained. No carbs for five days. Not even about a sweet potato <sighs> or nothing. The biggest thing is you don't sleep. It's because you're not. It, carbs make you tired, obviously. So yeah. I don't really sleep that much. So I really have to force it. And I do get six hours sleep a night. But when you're training, mm. obviously your muscles really grow when you're asleep. So I deal train. I deal sleep for bodybuilders twelve hours. Which I ain't got time for that. Twelve so hours. If you had a good one, that would be you know hell. a lot of a nap in the afternoon. A lot of them. I like a nap. I ain't got time afternoon. for that unless yeah. I fall asleep in the office. But yeah. you know, which has been known, but um, <laughs> <laughs> involuntary. Yeah. Um, but it works for me. I'll get mm -hmm. where I am. I'm a 30, just under a 34 waist now. I'll probably go down to a 30 or the lowest I've been is a 28. And what do you know about 15 stone? Oh, I don't know. In kilos, I'm 95. Yeah. Fucking big unit, but... Yeah, so I mean... Do you box or anything? Nah. None no, I've that. never done any martial arts. I've never really... For, for Martial arts, boxing, MMA, and all that stuff... It's great as a sport. It's a great discipline. It's great to keep fit. Mm -hmm. It's a bit of a bit of a little bit of a um, illusion that because you're a good boxer, you're gonna be a good bodyguard. Mm -hmm. It hasn't massively got a place in the industry. Those things. So, what's the difference then from when you're bodyguarding through? Do you know all the techniques? To like, is it grappling or whatever? Yeah, I mean, people? look, most of the stuff certainly in self defence. Certainly in London, everything's. Nine times out of ten, if if I can see a situation occurring with someone I'm with, I'll move the person I'm looking after. I won't mm -hmm. even touch anyone else. I'll say, come on, let's go, you know, just get away from it, mm -hmm. create a bit of distance. If it, obviously on the odd occasion, maybe you get someone, you know, grab her, tries to grab her, then you've only got to grab their hand, you've only got to push them away. One good hard shove, it can create a metre, maybe more, depending on the size of them, which is enough. If you're moving the other way as well, you've just created two metres in, in less than a second. Mm -hmm. That's enough to get away and not, you know, when these things happen as well, you're not in the middle of nowhere. It's always other, hundreds of other people around yeah. you normally know, get involved. And, do you know what I mean? So mm -hmm. I've never really needed to be, you know, quadru Violent. quadruple black belt. Yeah. Double back flip kick and yeah, all that. Yeah, yeah, Bruce um, Lee style. Yeah, I just just not needed it. And mm -hmm. to be fair, I ain't got time. I can't do everything. I haven't got the time. And to do that, you know, the guys I do know who do that, they're very good at it, but they got a passion for it as well. Mm -hmm. You know, they love doing it. They, they're instructors in it and they've been doing it since they were a child. I haven't, you know, and I've got to do a limited amount of fighting for film work, but it's all pub rule yeah. stuff, really. Mm -hmm. So I'm not going to be doing a Bruce Lee film. Yeah. So through it, you've got all your visions for the, the future, but what do you want to do? Is it mainly the acting stuff to get into films? And yeah, as time goes on, I'd mm -hmm. like to push that because if I don't get a decent slot in something there, I won't feel like I've ticked the book. You know, I've done it. Mm -hmm. So I, I will make that happen. I'll have to, even if I'm 75 and I get in something, you know, I'll make, I'll make that bit happen. Um, how much further I go on... Once I've done something, I kind of I don't lose interest. But mm. if I don't see that as a next stage to go on with it, I've been it. Yeah. If that's if I think I've done all I can do with it, I've been it. So it's a lot I can do with acting, obviously. So it should last a while. But equally, I think in the long run, what I'll probably do is end up directing. 
think so. Yeah, that's, that's, that's where I think I'd like to go to. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I mean, just writing this TV show lately as well and sending it to... You know, I got some really good feedback on that as well, written and the context as well. And yeah. I, didn't, I didn't do that much revision to sort of look to see how to write one. I've mm-hmm. never written one before. I just typed it out. But mm-hmm. um, I've got... I have a good idea and a vision of what things should be and how storyline, you know, I don't know if I'd be a writer or just a director or both, I don't know, but I'd maybe, when we're talking, I don't know. Yeah, but it's exciting that you've got these visions that you yeah. think, right, I'm going to get a major part, that I'm going to write my own film, my own show. It's brilliant because I come with visions now. I'm at the stage, I was very good with coming up with ideas and having yeah. to tell anybody I needed approval, but now it's a case of, you know what, I've got this idea, I know this is going to be, yeah. I know this is going to work. Yeah. There's no cunt going to stop me yeah, yeah, to yeah. what I'm I going to do. Ask for do you know what I mean? It's anymore. just um, do it, yeah. it's good that the fact that you've been front line on the private security to then sitting in the office and now you yeah. want to go front line and acting and then maybe I'm directing. Doing it. If you're just going to mess around and be the same as everyone yeah. else, then anyone can do that. Mm-hmm. I don't really. Yeah, you know, I've wasted my time mm-hmm. doing it, and I need to make a difference. Where can people get a hold of your social media? What's all your social media platforms? Um, so. I'm not a big user of Facebook. I keep getting told that's an old person thing these days. I don't know how true, <laughs> I don't know how true yeah. that is. And all my nephews and that, they've all only got Instagram these days. But mm-hmm. my Instagram's um, at Simon.Newton, so it's quite simple. Mm-hmm. Um, but yeah, that's actually all I use. I don't use Twitter. I, I don't I don't have YouTube. Yeah. Um, and I've got a website as well, which is uh, SimonNewtonLondon.com, mm-hmm. um, which we've just changed. Now I've put a video page on there because you know, stuff like this now I've been doing. Yeah. Where can people, people need a wee bit of protection? Because I've got a lot of fucking guys on this show that probably need yeah, a bit of backup can, sometimes. You, How do they get a hold of so you? So you can go to simonnewtonlondon.com and in the contact page there's um, my company. It says how to get to, to, to the security inquiries, but equally, um, um, ascarisecure.com is where uh, you'll find the company. Obviously, you can just get us through there and the, the, the phone's manned 24 hours a day. Yeah. For anybody that's maybe struggling or Simon, maybe battling PTSD or want to maybe mental health kind of side of things what advice would you give them for a man who's been through it himself seen a lot of shit and still plugging away and has got big plans for the future you clearly got your head screwed on your shoulders you clearly know yourself that you can slip into bad habits but for anybody watching what would you kind of say to them speak out it's yeah. always the biggest one of anything PTSD mm-hmm. if you see anyone say do anything it's always speak out and even on my on my Facebook now there's a lots of ex-military guys in there some of them I don't even know and every I reckon once a week I get another regimental badge come up with oh I pity so and so because he's going to take his own life or she has uh, and every time that person's not said anything no one's been aware that that's going to happen so I'm one of 10 million people that say speak out every day mm-hmm. and I, I, I wish I know saying speak out is not enough because people still aren't doing it so it's not working Yeah, but it's still better than not saying it but equally I do wish there was a formula what could make these people speak up because yeah. it really is certainly these days now PTSD is not you know it's not frowned upon it's not a it's not a, it shouldn't be a tough thing to talk about even you know majority of people it might have been um, branded as a military thing back in the day PTSD but it's you know it's, it's everything mental health massive anyway forget mm-hmm. PTSD it's mental health in general you know it's, it's massive these days mm-hmm. um and I've come across, that's one thing you do come across in private security in London, I've come across a lot of mental health people, you know, who are just not, not wired up correctly at all. And I mean, general public, when I've been looking after people, just, there's a lot of, a lot of death threats to people we look after get, you know, a lot of um, stalkers, they're all mental health. Yeah. Um, so it's a, it's a massive problem. And that's not military people, that's just, you know, your normal, yeah. your normal public. Mm-hmm. So, um it's speak up, work through it. It's not. Mm-hmm. I don't. I don't. I'm not a doctor. I don't understand exactly how it works. But what I do know is, some PTSD could affect you, and it might not affect me. So therefore, it's got to be something obviously to do with the way your brain works. It's not a given to everybody. Yeah. So if that's the case, then it's got to be a way for you to be able to control that somehow. And even if you can't remove it, control it to still lead a you know mm-hmm. a fairly sensible life and achieve. Everyone can achieve. Yeah. Good point, mate. And just sorry, the last question. So 15 years ago, we had we never had social media. Mm. Now we have. Was there a big difference then coming from the private security then? Now people know where guests are and celebrities are to 15 years ago. Yeah, Did it become I more mean, difficult? Uh, yeah, I mean, when I was Michael Jackson, that's 2006, I think I just heard of an email address at the time. Um, mm-hmm. I think I got my first email address and that's Ivan that time. Um, and the only coverage from what I really remember was MTV uh, and the Sun newspaper in the morning. 
in terms of it being a nuisance for a bodyguard, obviously if you're with a client who's let's say let's say Michael Jackson's around today and he had mm. Twitter and he he tweets so I'm in the Royal Albert Hall now and that's great, isn't it? You know, if no one's yeah. there, no one knows you. So we normally say to all the celebrity, you know, um, people we look after, don't post, especially Instagram stories. That's a classic. I've had it before where they've been on the plane and they've done the shot mm -hmm. of their first class seat going to London yeah. and you know it's all, it all gets worked out so we try and stop it equally it doesn't always work sometimes people still do it because not on purpose they're just not really thinking um, it does it, it does cause a problem it, yeah. is, it is a big problem my my social media now for me is it, massive for me now it really has helped me move on certainly in, mm -hmm. you know, in the acting thing and all the pictures on my um, on my social media is nothing was not on Google Mm -hmm. you know there's nothing really on there although there's a lot of security pictures which of my previous life if you like mm -hmm. but there's nothing on there which you can't yeah you know, so you it's can't a new see. chapter now you're just utilising things to your advantage yeah yeah basically I just mm -hmm. see it as that's what, what was you know it's not current I, even when I do these articles I don't talk about the people you know, it's, nothing, it's interesting to people I've looked after these people I mm -hmm. get that but when it comes up you know what, what what colour pants does my Jackson wear? <laughs> so I mean, just yeah, don't ask me because I, you know, yeah, 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 I don't, yeah, yeah. I don't get involved in that. And I, it's not, it's not just the protocol thing. But I don't mm -hmm. talk about things like that about my mates that are named celebrities. Yeah. You know, it's no one else's business, is it? Yeah, so, but if they're wanting the dirt into the yeah, press, they, that yeah, I do, I do bit. cross that. And yeah. if it starts going down that route, you can forget. You know, yeah, I'm just not that. even asking about what they like. You're not really there to build a relationship, no. you're there to protect. Yeah, do you know exactly. what I mean? It's a job. And that, yeah. there's always like that with people all the time. Yeah, you got on better with some than the others and that, but at the end of the day, you was there to do it, you know, your professional bodyguard yeah. to do the job. Mm -hmm. So that and that's it. And that's also although seventeen years later I'm not doing it anymore, I'd never ruin that now. Mm -hmm. You know, I'd never start going, Oh yeah, she was like this and he was like that yeah. and, and ruin the seventeen years I've had of a good but service. That's not good because if you've got a director looking in or somebody that's maybe owns a magazine they go, Well, he's speaking out about so people don't like that. Yeah. I never um, out anybody I've never outed anybody or told nah. anybody or, because don't get me wrong I felt the fire back a couple of times but is there a fucking any point yeah. do you know what I mean it because doesn't, get, yeah, it doesn't, doesn't achieve anything anywhere, nah. yeah and I think yeah I look forward to seeing your journey brother and um, what you're going to achieve and what films you're going to come in I say I fucking had him on my show and if you're going to direct something listen if you're looking for a big handsome Scottish guy man <laughs> you know my number brother Speed dial. I mean? yeah Simon <laughs> It's been an absolute pleasure, brother. And you, mate. Um, look forward to seeing your journey. Cool. Take care. Cheers. Check out more of my podcasts on the right and be sure to like, share and comment your thoughts on this week's podcast. Thank you.